Hey, good morning everybody. I got a new version of Input Mapper out, so uh, we're going to take a quick look at it and some of the things that it comes with. Uh, so, for starters, um, I finished up the controller to keyboard and controller to mouse mapping. Um, or, well, finished up, but I have at least uh, something in place that looks like it's working well enough. I'll wait for some feedback. Um, you can map directly to uh, any of the mouse buttons or uh, movement axes. Um, and you use that in combination with the now newly included axis tuning, because uh, you are going to want some dead zone in there to prevent drift. And uh, basically I have to clean this up. I'm going to make a nice looking uh, control just for it that has the graph like the old one used to have. Um, but basically we've expanded the functionality so not only can you choose a sensitivity curve dead zone, you can actually in real time type in the equation that you want it to use to calculate that stuff. So this nice long string of nonsense here is the actual mathematical equation that goes to con that goes into converting uh, these three values along with the input value into the output value. Uh, and you see uh, these square brackets that surround the letters. Those are our variables. We got C for curve, D for dead zone, and S for sensitivity. And the X is our input value. So uh, basically. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can fool around with this. Otherwise, this is the default, and it seems to work pretty well for most people. Uh, you can adjust the values in here, and it'll affect it live. Um, so that's uh, that's about it. That's for the axis, the axis tuning, and the device to mouse. Um, like I said, there's also a device to keyboard. Um, I think I got all the keys in there, and I think they seem to be working good. Uh, let's see, so uh, an example if you wanted to do a. I might as well just go ahead and do an example here, real quick. Uh, if you wanted to do, uh, you have a controller, we're going to do left stick X. Uh, we're going to do filter positive value. And what that means is you're pushing forward on the uh, left stick. Uh, we're going to have a digital threshold of 0.3, and what that means is that's the value it's going to wait for until it turns this into a, a yes or no for the key press. And we're going to send that to W. So just like uh, if you were mapping it to WASD or something on the left stick, that's what you would do. Uh, now, if you also want to add in a run modifier, uh, you would do, again, left stick X. Filter for a positive. You would raise this to eh, about there. Mapping destination, and we're going to say shift. So now what this means is that if you push left on the stick a little bit to get to that previous value we had, which was like 0.3, it'll go ahead and push the W. But if you keep pushing further and you get to like about 0.6, it'll go ahead and push this shift as well. And that's how you can make it so it runs. Um, all this, uh, obviously there's a lot of features because it is uh, going to be, you know, very customizable. Users can do all kinds of stuff. But this is also why I am writing in the functionality where people can, you know, share profiles for games or, uh, you know, if there's like a generic, you know, good, well-made WASD to mouse uh, mapping, uh, somebody can upload that and uh, that'll be, you know, shared among users where, when they launch a game. Um, in this area here, there'll be an option where it says, you know, there's detected online profiles for this game. Do you want to use it? Blah, blah, blah. Something like that. Um, I haven't thought that far ahead, but uh, yeah, just to kind of help users uh, not have to go through that every time. And of course, you can just, you know, duplicate the profiles and all that stuff. So, 
Um, something else uh, I'm working on, I have a plugin in progress for generic um, devices. Uh, you see I got my 3D mouse that shows up here. Uh, Xbox One shows up again too. Um, but basically this will expand the functionality so that uh, pretty much any um, any direct input device you plug in will be able to work with Input Mapper. Uh, I'm still working on all the channel mappings and all that stuff. Um, it will be, you, you, there's still benefits to using an actual plugin like uh, if you have the X input plugin, you're better off using that instead of using this device here. Uh, mainly for the fact that um, if you ever, if you look at the way that uh, the device channels look for the direct input controller, it's crazy. Um, they're not, they don't have them nicely labeled or laid out or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot cleaner if you want to go into it and you want to, if you want to, you know, look at this because it makes more sense what you're looking at. So, um, that's about it guys. Uh, got a lot of work to do. I'm also working on implementing the new version four of HRD Guardian into Input Mapper 1.7, um, in preparation for Benjamin signing and releasing that driver. Uh, so that'll work out of the box. Um, other than that, uh, continued work on the uh, user controls for the settings and all that stuff, making that look nice and pretty. Um, that new direct input driver. Um, let's see, and I think that'll about finish it up. Uh, and then I can head on, uh, start working on macros. Um, so uh, make sure you get to the new beta website. Uh, sign up, register there. Um, if you have any issues with the application or you're testing it out, make sure you use the forums there. Um, other than that, uh, have a good one.